YouTube, what is up Giants fans? It is your boy Jay Dimes, and we're back at it with another New York Giants video. Back at it with another New York Giants banger. And if you have not done so yet, make sure that subscribe button, not just because you love Giants football, which if you're watching this video, I think you do, but the Giants are 2-0. We're undefeated. Hit the subscribe button and join the channel. Um, and in this video, I want to talk about the Giants possibly going out and signing a free agent wide receiver and my overall thoughts on the wide receiver room um heading into week three but i wanted to start off talking about kenny galladay the 20 million dollar man the 72 million dollar man total kenny galladay got benched for david sills this past sunday got benched basically for david sills only played i think about two three plays i know he was in for the daniel belgian touchdown and um he got benched for David Sills. Brian Dable told Kenny Galladay early on in the week that we're going to go with David Sills. And Brian Dable said that you're not a lock to start each and every week. If you're not battling it out of practice, if you're not showing us effort in practice, you're not a lock to start for us when we go and play these teams each and every Sunday or Monday or Thursday, whenever we're playing. You're not a lock if you're not showing out in practice. And then um, the reports I've been reading, Kenny Galladay had a moment in practice where Daniel Jones was throwing the ball to the receivers. I think uh, Jones basically launched the pass to Kenny Galladay and, uh, and he could have caught the football, but he did not catch the football. He just, he tried, he did not make the effort to go out and try to catch the football. You can kind of look back at last year's last game versus the Commanders at the end of the season where the ball gets thrown into his, uh, it gets thrown to him, he doesn't even try to catch the football. Doesn't even try. So if that's what you're showing out in practice, Brian Dable's already making the culture where if you're not batting it out in practice, you're not gonna start. You not you might not get as many snaps as you was hoping if you ain't battling out in practice. So he had the right to do that. He basically is setting the foundation where, like I said, if you're not batting out in practice, you're not gonna be a lock to start no matter who you are. And I love that mentality. I love it, you know, and Kenny Gallagher is getting paid regardless. He's getting paid regardless. He doesn't have to go out there and, you know, freaking catch 15 balls for almost 100,000 yards. He doesn't have to do that. It's nowhere in the contract where it says Kenny Galladay has to ball out. It does not It does not say that anywhere in the contract. But um, the Giants are done with Kenny Galladay. They're done with him. I'm done with him. I gave him, you know, a fresh start, a clean slate. But in these first two games alone, he hasn't shown anything. Two receptions for 22 yards. Still has not caught a touchdown. Me and Kenny Galladay had the same amount of touchdowns in the past two seasons. It's insane. Hopefully, maybe one day, maybe this Monday, you know, Monday Night Football, it all clicks for him. Maybe he starts. Maybe he goes out there and ball, hopefully. Because the Giants do need a wide receiver, which we're going to transition into the Giants getting a free agent wide receiver. And um, I know the guy that we all are talking about is Odell Beckham Jr. Are the Giants going to sign Odell Beckham Jr.? OBJ has been, you know, kind of teasing a New York Giants reunion. You know what I'm saying? He's not, you know, ever ruled out coming back to New York. You know that he basically misses New York. And, you know, I do think there is a possibility that we see Odell Beckham Jr. playing at MetLife. Not for the Jets, but for the New York football Giants. And let me break it down to you. Let's say the Giants continue winning. I'm not going to say they're going to go out there and, you know, be a world beater. I'm not saying they're going to be still undefeated by the time OBJ is clear for football. But let's say the Giants are in the thick of things. They could possibly make a playoff run. I think that is in a world where OBJ signs back with the New York Giants just for a playoff push. Just to help us for a playoff push. You sign back with the team and, you know what I'm saying, all is good. I really do think that is a possibility. Now, I know a lot of people are saying the money is a kind of an issue. In my opinion, I don't think OBJ is looking for the big bucks. I don't think he's looking for the big bucks. And I think he would take a discount to come back to the Giants. I just think he would. He's friends with Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley and him are still, you know, best buds from their times back in 2018, where, you know what I'm saying, we had Saquon and OBJ on the same team. Those guys are still friends. So I think if, you know, OBJ, wanted to play for any team you know depending on if he wants a super bowl does he want to you know just come back and have another you know another ride with the new york giants i think he would sign but um it's still you know what i'm saying he's still hurt you know he's still recovering from the acl injury and um i think that was the scenario where the giants do go out and sign him only if they're in a playoff push if they are you know 
if it's late in the season, we already know we're going with a new quarterback. You know what I'm saying? We know we're going with a new QB. We're not looking as good. We look like an actual rebuilding team or we're losing. Then I don't think OBJ would sign here. But if we're winning games, if we're in the thick of the NFC East and we could possibly make it to the playoffs, I see the Giants going out there and signing a wide receiver, and I see it being Odell Beckham Jr. But what if it's not OBJ? Let's talk about right now. The Giants wide receiver room right now looks horrible. It looks horrible. Kenny Galladay, your highest paid player, who we already talked about, has only caught 22 yards over the past two games. The second game, he's he barely played. You started David Sills, the guy who wasn't even a freaking lock to make the roster out of preseason, started over him. That's already bad. Kenny Galladay, the Giants are done with him. Brian Dable seems like he's done with him. That's kind of the consensus on how everything is looking with Kenny Galladay and the New York Giants. You got Kadarius Tony. I don't understand what's going on with KT. I don't, you know, I still think that he will, you know, play games. I still do think he will show why he was picked in the first round of NFL draft. I think he's going to show why his talent. Because with him, it's all about health. I think it's all about health. I do not think he was healthy enough to play a full, you know, set of snaps in that Tennessee game. And I still think the Giants are kind of trying to just catch him back up. Get him back in the speed of things off that hamstring injury, which I think he had surgery on, you know. And, um, you know, just progressing him into the season. I feel like this Cowboys game, the third game of the season, I feel like that's where we're going to see Kadarius Tony. I really do. Last year, Kadarius Tony basically had his breakout game. Versus the Dallas Cowboys. I can see on Monday Night Football, Kadarius only gets him catches. Uh, Richie James. Richie James has been like a low-key MVP for us. Richie James wasn't even, again, a lot to make the roster heading into the season. He was basically just a special team pickup. And, you know, we already had C.J. Board, you know what I'm saying, who was basically our kick return, our kick return, punt returner. But he's showed up more than just on special teams. He's actually our leading receiver right now. So shout out to Richie James. Richie James has been balling over these past two games, and he's been basically Daniel Jones's number one option for real, for real. So shout out to Richie James. Richie James, you know, is leading the Giants in yards. I think he's on pace to catch like, I think, 900 yards. And for Richie James, that would be a career high, and that would be a, you know, a good amount of yards on the team. Uh, Sterling Shepard. I think Sterling Shepard is going to get even better. He had the deep ball catch versus Tennessee. That was, I love to see that. I still like Sterling Shepard. You know what I'm saying? I think he's really Daniel Jones's, you know, go-to option. I think him and Sterling Shepard have a very great chemistry, very good rapport. But um, right now, Sterling Shepard's still, you know, still getting back in the groove of things off the Achilles injury. But I do think we're going to start seeing Sterling Shepard make a bigger impact each and every game as we get closer and closer to, you know, the real start of the season. I'm talking about the when it gets, like I said, into the thick of things, I think we're going to start seeing Sterling Shepard ball out even more. Um, David Sills started over Kenny Galladay in last week's game. But um, overall, this wide receiver group is just not good. And people are expecting Daniel Jones to go out there and ball out, put up these amazing statistics. Look at the receivers. His num his real number one receiver is Kenny Galladay. It's Kenny Galladay. He doesn't even like he wants to be here. He doesn't even like he cares if he wins or loses or not. That's at least one thing I said about Kadarius Tony. He doesn't care what his stat sheet looks like. He doesn't care if he has, you know, if he plays two snaps. As long as there's a dub near that, he's perfectly fine with that. And I just love that about Kadarius Tony being a team player. But, um... If we're looking at right now, I do think the Giants are looking for people, you know what I'm saying? They already signed Jalen Smith, who we picked up last year. They signed him to the practice squad, heading into Dallas, heading to the Dallas game, you know, like they did last year. I don't know what it is about Jalen Smith signing with us before we play Dallas. I don't know if he gives us a little bit of intel or he's freaking, you know, an uh, informer from the Dallas Cowboys. But either way, we signed him to the practice squad. I do think he'll be elevated from the practice squad onto the active roster. Um, before we go and play them on Monday night. Uh, they also worked out Joe Sherbert. Joe Sherbert, I'm, I probably but botched his name. Joe Sherbert, linebacker, veteran linebacker. Uh, I think he played for the Jags, played for the Browns, played for the Steelers. If we were, you know, to pick him up, I would definitely like that uh, pick up. He gets a bunch of tackles. He's he's a pretty decent linebacker. Nothing too crazy. He's kind of like a Blake Martinez, kind of. But um, adding him to the defense would be cool. But uh, they did go out there and get Jalen Smith. And um, when we're talking about the wide receivers, reports have said that Brian Dable has been FaceTiming some free agent wide receivers. Now, I don't know how true that is. It is reported from Aaron Wilson of Pro Football Network. So you can take that with a grain of salt. If I'm, if I'm you, I'm only, 
you know, believing in reports that's from these Giants beat reporters, Jordan Ranas, the Dan Duggins. So, if that is true, though, I could see it because the Giants do need help in the wide receiver room. But um, this is a pretty, pretty long video. I don't usually make 10-minute videos, but uh, as we get, you know, closer and closer each and every week, I'm going to start making longer videos for you guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, hit the subscribe button. We are 2-0. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed the like, comment, hit the subscribe button. And until then, it's been your boy Jay Dons, and I am out. Go Giants.